Alright y'all, this is my first time playing this game. It is called Her Story. I'm just gonna go post the links and I'll be right back. Yes, I'm playing a police officer. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> but I have a super... I have a super um, big interest with like crime procedurals and mysteries and stuff like that, so... UK game? Oh, it totally is in the UK at Portsmouth. Alright, I'm gonna read this. Computer technology is the backbone of modern police work. The Logic Database is one of the many continuing efforts to digitize our workflow and preserve evidence in a manner which will allow you to work more efficiently. In the coming years, the computer will continue to be the most valuable item in your crime-fighting toolkit. This database contains footage transferred from the existing homicide and serious crime tape archive at Portsmouth. Not Portsmouth, Virginia, probably Portsmouth, UK. Uh, it has been automatically sorted using our ASR technology. Each statement made by the interview participants is stored separately so they can be tagged for submission to court. The audio has been digitally stenographed, st and the content of the testimony is attached to each clip. To retrieve a clip, type in a word, example, robbery, into the search field. Click search, and the database will turn all clips in which the speaker uses that word. To narrow a search, use multiple words, example, robbery supermarket if you are working from a printed transcript. So what I can tell right now is that I need to get a, pap a paper. 
notepad and a pen to write down these keywords that will be useful. If you are working from a printed screen, transcript, you can be even more precise. Use inverted commas to search for an exact match against the entire statement, meaning in quotes. To, uh, to store a clip for later reference, click Add to Session. Also, if you wish to add additional tags of your own to help future searches, please click in the User Tags box and type in your desired tags. For any further assistance, please contact your department's information technology representative, the Police Information Technology Organization. Cool, what's in the rubbish? Mirror Game, HSoft, Cracker, Cyro. Oh shit. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but anyways. All right, I'm having fun on the police computer, who knew? Pardon me, folks. I got a text message. One volume missing. Okay, so we're looking for a missing video. This is going to get fun. Super. It's a reflection. Oh, that's cool. They have, you can see like the guy's kind of face. You can see lips here, here. So we've got four murder videos. You think it's murder? murder. What can I do to help? How do I remove from session? That's me. But February, I mean, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? The friend that I know is watching this video right now. I'm curious what her thoughts are about me literally doing police work. But uh, I'm sure she'll tell me what she thinks privately. Okay, so yeah, that's me. Does it keep the tags? Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't murder Simon. 
You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. I just got that f message from my friend. Good advice, pal. Sorry, just give me a second, my one viewer. I've got the, the phone. Phone going off. Okay, back to the game. Alright, so... Simon. Simon. Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work. Mirror making, feature windows, artistic things. Really beautiful things. Simon, Simon Smith. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. <laughs> if his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo. They said a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. I don't even know. It's the Rockington Arms. The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. And the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. It's the Rockington Arms. The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. And the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games. You know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Where's the option to slam my arms down and be like, you're lying? 
My friend said that. I can't take credit. Yes. You can write letters on it. You know, uh... Alright, so they're looking at... Write letters on it very much. There's an abstract one. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? So, it was Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday he didn't come back, I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon, they had a job, he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at the Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning. It just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. So. Can I remove from session? You think it's mad? What if I do? Oh, that's turning off the game. I'm dumb. Okay, going back. Oh, thank goodness. Alright. What if I don't want the one video there? spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No. No one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone sang with you from the rock. was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date, we went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. 
We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. So Hannah was a twin. Terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me, but that was it. We didn't want another card on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. Deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean, that's when she got pregnant. From that one time. Looks like he's got fertile sperm. All right, Hannah sharing dates with Eric, I think. Oh no, what, Simon? This, oh wait, did she say Eric? Hannah was so smitten. What is this girl's name? I don't even know. turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch. It's a really nice one. That was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, black pants and bear. Uh, he would have taken that with him. It's not in the house. Yes, there's a car that we share, a Cavalier, Ooh. and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked on the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash. But yeah, well, that's reasonable. Okay, well, that doesn't sound good. Simon's silver visa card. Uh, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Upset about her argument, but I'm not sure what else he said. He likes Helen. He likes blondes. <laughs> okay. She's a blonde. Good to know. She's holding her hands there. 
How is that phrased? He mm. likes Helen, he likes no. blondes? He likes Helen, he likes blondes. Hmm. Was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <sighs> we were 15. Wow, I, I know how to spell. <laughs> no, um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. I loved him, even though he treated me like shit. Lots of drunken teenage sex. Oh, goodness. We did it in a church once. It's stupid. That sounds fun. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. He made the decision to stop You're fucking sad, me yeah. after six months. Those early experiences, they help you realize who's really important to you, you know? Family. Oh God. What if you don't have one? Um, Carl split up with... Cool. family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. Some differences? <coughs> She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm, she is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. Hold on, I gotta rewind that. Mm, but Hannah... She is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, putting a tooth, a graze. My God, calm down. We used a hairbrush. Uh. After that, we took it in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. Okay. Really fucked up thing about a hairbrush. <laughs> Let's just uh, leave it at that. <laughs> All right, I need to search. 
Wow, there's another Ouija board. When beautiful people died, we always felt like it was a sign. You remember Princess Grace? Grace Kelly? She died in a car crash the year before we met Simon. We used a Ouija board to speak to her, and that gave us the power to find him. What? That's what we thought then. That people who die tragically leave some kind of magic behind. Sure. We used to share dreams. We used to wake up and write them down in our diaries immediately and compare them. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? Okay, so they think Hannah killed the husband. This other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? You want me to play something? This other have you looked? You want me to play something? I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay. Probably needs tuning. No, it's okay. How about a traditional ballad? Should be right up your street. I killed Simon and I killed Simon and this is my confession. Two sisters came walking by the sea. And then it gets 
to be weird, so I think that's a good place to stop. That wasn't weird? Wow. Um... <laughs> I'm just gonna repeat your comments, pal. Put her in handcuffs. This song is terrible. She needs to do serious time. Okay, I don't know if that was a confession or not, but that was fucking crazy. Um, okay, what other words do I have here? Oh. Yes, we'd fight. We fought on the beach once and I held Eve's head underwater. Oh, so that's what the song is. around, was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her. Why thing. why tell this to the police voluntarily? Why? But that was it. It was just a moment. It was just a moment of homicidal mania, we don't were, worry. We up it was a love hate relationship. It was a love hate relationship. I tried to kill Eve by drowning her. Cash, just casual. <laughs> I just wanted to kill her, just girl things. <laughs> Alrighty then, I'm disturbed. Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, Sometimes. What is your name? <laughs> A police station. Yeah, when I was young. We ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up in the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve, so my parents let me off. Did she say Bob Dylan? When I was Bob Dylan was.
That's Morse code, but I don't know what it means. Was that Hannah in Morse code? Okay, so does does she have dissociative identity disorder? What is that? Um, I'm going to quickly look up Morse code and see if I can figure out what that was. Fucked up. One, two, three is S. SB? Okay, I don't think this is right. Hey, friend watching, let me know if you get anything from this, if you think this is more code or not. Okay, so I think the first one is a tap code and it says bad Hannah. I think this because I just read the explanation. <laughs> Okay, well that's cool. I figured that part out. Um, Oh, it's not bad, it's by Hannah. My mother called me Eve. My mother called me Eve. All right, so she's a woman with the Sosti of Identity Disorder who murdered her husband and either doesn't know, or I don't know, but I need water. Access limited to first five. No. It was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of firstborn girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread. Maybe I misunderstood. Sometimes 
No. Florence is finding her. It's hard to know if this is all true. Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy. If Hannah was eating a lot, they didn't mind. She didn't put on any weight. That girl has a healthy appetite. Um, if they heard us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games. And that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant! So I ducked into our bedroom <laughs> and seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. My mum was amazed. I don't really understand that one. Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy, but they didn't mind. But us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games. And that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant! So I Knocked down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant! So I ducked into our bedroom, <laughs> and seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. My mum was amazed. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Florence raised me in her home. I never left it. She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby, carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. She was me. Florence was a warm, kind person, but she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I... when I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it, older papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. 
I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand, I guess. I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But, I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. No, they were shut. Most of the windows were really hard to open anyway. They're stifling in the summer. They were painted over by my dad. Could have left a door open accidentally. Or there's a cat flap in the back door. No, no cat. My parents had a cat before they died called Domino. It was this little black thing with white dots. And we never did anything about the cat flap, but if you were thin, you could maybe squeeze through it. No, he doesn't keep a diary. That's my thing. I've kept one, well, as long as I can remember, since I was a girl. It helps make sense of my day. And when you're forced to put something into words, it just gives you perspective. Everyone's on the same page. No, he doesn't keep a diary. That's my um, When I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. Um, when I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street.
our way of life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things, and we were very careful. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could and couldn't do in any given situation. It was exhaustive. We lived a second life through those rules. Rules for things that could only ever happen inside our imaginations. We would consider all the permutations of future events and agree rules to walk our way through them. Bruce. Oh yeah, no, it's nothing. I was going through the top cupboard in my kitchen and the chair slipped and I kind of hit the door with my face. It really hurt like hell. <laughs> Bruise. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you, but I haven't already told the other policemen. I found the body. I... One of us got hurt, the other one would have to be hurt too. A grazed knee, a bruise. When I lost my tooth first, we had to pull our harness to match. Once, I slept with a boy who was seeing another girl. The girlfriend came up to Hannah the next day and punched her in the face, gave her a huge black eye. That night, she had to do the same to me. She almost went too far. I couldn't see out of that eye for days. She snuck a frozen piece up for me from the kitchen. Mm. So much of our bodies were synchronised anyway. We started our period on the same day. All our childhood diseases, stomach bugs, nits. This was nine, about nine. I went round and she was waiting for me. She was furious and so angry, the kind of anger you could only have towards yourself. We screamed at each other, argued, cried, we fought. I hit her back, left a bruise. I had my wig on from performing and she tore it off. Eventually we grew tired of fighting her. I left.
Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to take the story? It's a real life fairy tale. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to take the story? It's a real life fairy tale. Hey pal, are you still enjoying watching? Is this entertaining enough? Good. I'm trying to read on Reddit. I just want to know exactly like what the structure of this game is in the sense of like how do you complete it without spoilers so I understand what exactly like am I supposed to put these in order okay so aha I haven't been into work. I've been, I mean, I guess I've just been waiting, waiting to hear from you, hear from my husband. I have a pretty good idea about how it happened. When you suspect someone of murdering their husband. when you suspect someone of murdering their husband. This, I'm trying to get more information about this. It doesn't want me to, there we go, desktop site. Okay. She's crying, I guess. She's sad because she thought she saw her husband with another woman. But it's okay because she finds out it wasn't her husband, it was his brother. And so it's fine. Crying, I guess. 
She's sad because she thought she saw her husband with another woman. But it's okay because she finds out it wasn't her husband, it was his brother. And so it's fine. sound suspicious. It's not a normal thing to do to drive to the other end of the country. I just, I wanted to keep it simple. I know it was stupid not to tell you everything. Saying I spent the night in Glasgow when my husband went missing, I thought it would, you know, distract you from what was important. It's different now. There he is. It was supposed to be a secret. Just because Simon is dead doesn't mean I have to give up all his secrets. It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to Simon. No one murdered my husband because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. This woman is a snitch. I got in the car and I drove and just kept driving north, just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. Glasgow, I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. Yeah. That's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time, he must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Except you're a liar. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash, just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. Aren't they going to be able to disprove all that? The hospital must have details when I was looked at. Hospital. There's a scratch on the car. Mm -hmm. 
aus der Hospital. I don't see how it's hard. We've established I was in Glasgow when he was killed. You've spoken with the hospital. I got in the car and I drove. I just kept driving north, just kept as far away as I could. And I finally stopped. So, yes. Um, I slept in the rubbish pulled from the payphone. my dust every week, maybe less. I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust, and she said, if people ask, tell them you do it once a week, but every few weeks is okay. I think she was just trying to make me feel better. I mean, when I was there, she was hoovering every day in a ran and ordered house. You know how that generation is, putting on a brave front. Hmm. She has secret stashes of cigarettes. Doug doesn't even know she smokes. When I was there, I saw her. She has these sort of porcelain vases, ornamental, next to the Reader's Digest books. Cigarettes inside. And she still has them. I mean, last time I was there, I looked in a vase. There was a fresh pack. And in all those years of marriage, and she still has a secret like that. Um, I hoover, I dust. After I should dust, and she said. Tell them you do it once. I once asked Eleanor how. Oh man. When we weren't together, we'd send secret messages by tapping out a code that we'd learned from a book. The knock code. Something prisoners of war would use. We'd tap them out on radiator pipes or the attic floor. When we went together, we'd send secret messages.
There was a conference, something to do with double glazing, in Oxford. There was a conference, double glazing. Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. He was cheating on you. Like most guys do if they are unhappy with their partner. Yeah, I've been mad to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us, there's always been pressure. street. It was busy so I had to park down the end of the road. I walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack. I shouted out. Um, I walked straight into the kitchen because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. But he wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. I looked quickly in the living room. Nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower. The phone rang whilst I was in the shower. I didn't answer it. I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. This time I spoke to him. Then I called Doug and Elena. And then I decided to come and see you. Dana? Oh, wow. Yeah. 1984. It was an awful year in the end. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. I lost the baby at the end of spring and my parents died in the summer. It was a hot summer, a heat wave. So, when they discovered the bodies, it was just awful. Because of the circumstances, them dying together like that, they brought in a lot of police. 
a forensic entomologist. I had to look that up. It was because of the heat. Pardon me. take a break or stop for the night just responding to some text messages while I decide I have a pretty decent idea even though it doesn't look like I've watched even close to all of the videos what happened 